Today's Sports Spectrum interview was pre-recorded prior to the coronavirus outbreak. Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. So glad that you're joining us here today on the show. Our guest is Michael Schlacht. He is a minor league pitching coach with the Milwaukee Brewers. And this conversation took place a couple months back before the season started in person at a conference in Florida. But it was a conversation about the minor league life, the minor league coaching life. So this guy had dreams of making it to the major leagues as a pitcher, Michael Schlacht. He was selected in the third round of the 2004 MLB amateur draft by the Texas Rangers, made it as high as double A, and then retired in 2014 after the 2014 season at the age of 28. And so he goes into coaching, and at 31, 32, he's now a manager in independent league ball in 2017 with the Fargo Moorhead Redhawks. And then he gets a call. And he tells that story of getting that call and how an opportunity presented itself in 2019 to become part of the Milwaukee Brewers organization. Michael's a great guy, but he really takes you inside the dynamic of family and decisions and making this leap and following God's call, seeking the Lord for answers on where he wanted Michael and his family to end up. You'll like this conversation with Michael Schlack, Milwaukee Brewers minor league pitching coach, and he joins us here on Sports Spectrum. Michael Schlack, welcome to Sports Spectrum. Thank you. I've heard so many of these. Now to, now to be behind the microphone is a lot of fun. Good. Well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that we were able to connect in person. We've known each other for a few years now, both through um, the conferences that we've attended and even through social media, where I think we first um, came in contact years ago. Um, you are, as we tape this, it, it's early 2020, and you are, like I said, a minor league pitching coach with the Milwaukee Brewers. Let's go back one year. It's late 2019, early 2019, I should say. And at that point, you are managing in the independent league in, in, in professional baseball with the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks in Fargo, North Dakota. Yes. And all of a sudden, something happened. So a year ago, where are you in the mindset as far as um, coaching and where God had you at that moment? Yeah, it's been quite a, quite a year. Um, I was... Like you said, I was managing. I was doing player personnel, player procurement for Fargo Moorhead Redhawks um, in the American Association. I, I had my mind around building a team. I had my mind around what it looked like to be an in independent baseball as a manager. Um, it's not just the one side of the game that I knew from a little boy. I've always pitched, you know, and and so to manage was a lot, but at the same time it was so necessary to learn that part of the game. And so, you know, you, you, you rewind a year. That's what I was doing. I, I, I had my mind set on that. I was consumed with that. And, yeah. and it's a, it's a tough job. I mean, you're, you're on the phone 20 hours a day. Like you're talking to guys across the world, you know, you're waiting for them to get off work. It's just, there's so much that goes into it. I don't think a lot of people completely understand that part of it. And then you get a call. And suddenly an opportunity arises. And you and I were talking a little bit here before we started taping about, you know, God's direction and God's call on our lives, right? And it's like, how do you know that this is what you're supposed to do, the door that you're supposed to walk through, that God is clearly in the midst of the decisions that sort of shape our lives? This was a big decision that in many ways is shaping your life. And and I'd really love for you to share the story of like walking through that decision-making process to eventually leave your job. Oh, I would love to talk about it. I, you know, I, it's my fault because what happened was I I told too many people that I was comfortable. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I was finally getting the hang of managing. I was, I, I knew Fargo. I knew the owners. I knew the team. I knew everything. I knew where I was going to live. Like everything was comfortable. And so people would say, you know, what's your, what's your gig? Like, what do you do? I'm like, Oh, well I got it down. You know, I, I (laughs) got this. Yeah. I got it figured out. I I (laughs) see big mistake. And, and, um, when that phone call came, we were visiting friends 
in Texas. And I told my wife that the Milwaukee Brewers called me and they want to talk to me about, about a job. It, 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 it wasn't a big like deal at the time because I know how this works. Yeah. But you, did you see this coming? You know, baseball people have relationships within the community and okay, maybe they'll call me because of the relationship I had. Or did this kind of shock you that all of a sudden I got a call from the brewers? It was, it was completely out of nowhere. Okay. Um, the only background that I have with the Milwaukee brewers was the former, uh, infield and first base coach, Carlos Sabero, who was my minor league manager for a few years. And literally my entire core group at last year's PAO mm-hmm. were all Brewers guys. Okay. And, and I met them, Chase Anderson, Eric Kratz, Corey Kniebel, these guys, uh, you know, there's Austin Rubick was, was a minor league. I ended up coaching him this year. Hmm. Um, they were all in my core group. And so I was like, oh, Brewers, wow, they seem like cool dudes. And, you know, I knew Carlos and I heard awesome things. So then, you, you know, you fast forward to that. I had no idea it was coming. I didn't see it coming. I didn't even know they had any openings until I got a text from Carlos and then a phone call from the farm director. And mm-hmm. they just said, can we just talk? We just want to talk. We know you have a job, but let's just talk a little bit about um, a potential opening we might have. Okay. So I tell that to my wife. She stares at me like, kind of like I stared at her. Like, is this real? Like, what are we doing? Like, are we, like we're comfortable. And we started getting a little bit anxious, to be honest with you, like yeah. as it progressed. And I, it went from one phone call to another phone call, one person to another person, and then another person and another phone call. And I said to her, my prayer is that if this is not meant to be, the door will close. And if it is meant to be, God will continue it on and we'll take it step by step. And right. it continued on. And each step that it got closer, it also got closer to the season. <laughs> so I'm putting together an independent team while I'm interviewing for a job in a major league organization. I'm not telling really anybody in Fargo because I don't it, like, what is it? It's nothing yet. I haven't had anything offered to me. Right. So, but I'm still signing guys there saying, Hey, come play for me. Hmm. But am I going to be there? I didn't know. And yeah. so it was just a really interesting situation all the way around. But then you get the offer. And now you have to make the decision. And I know it wasn't an easy... And in fact, the first question I asked you was, I assume it's it's a pay increase, right? Because you're going to a major league team from an independent league. Well, not so fast, my friend. It's not necessarily. No. So there's a lot that goes into saying yes to this, but walk us through that. Because I think there are people listening who end up at crossroads in their journey of wondering what God's plan is, what door to walk through, and is this really what God has in store for me? even if it doesn't make and sometimes make sense. Uh, I'm living proof of that. Um, I've done that in my journey. So what was that like for you? In one sense, it would make a lot of sense. People would say, well, that's independent baseball. This is major league baseball, affiliated baseball. You know, you're, you're moving into a player development of an organization who's coming off of, of an NLCS. Um, yeah. You know, everything seemed to be headed in the right direction. You know, it's the Brewers, like a storied friend, that kind of thing. Yes, of course, right? But decisions that I made earlier in my career were just my wife and me. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, I have two little mouths and two sweet little boys, and I'm not affecting just me here. And and like you said, it was not a pay increase. Yeah. I mean, it, it went the other way. Yeah. Um, Interesting. And so what did that look like? It, it, it looked like a lot of really, really, really late nights with my wife sitting on the couch. We, we turned the fire on. We made a cup of coffee, and we were like, let's see. Let's walk this through. Let's walk this let's through. Let's look at the numbers. Let's because, crunch the yeah, numbers. Yeah, <laughs> because she, she is the budgeter and the list maker, and she she writes down, like, here on this side, these are the risks, and on this side, this is the rewards. And, and, and I got some really good advice from her and from some other people, and they said, here's what you need to do. You need to talk about and write down all of the things about this that could benefit you mm-hmm. or that you think are good. Write down all the things that you think could potentially be bad or negative, whatever you want to call it, and then see how many line up with what you stand for, who you are, 
and what you believe to the best of your knowledge that God has in store for you. And that will make your decision easier. And I said, that is really good stuff. So that process, along with praying through it, talking through it with my wife, um, we came to the decision that if God had opened this door and, and he made it so clear through prayer, through the way that we were feeling, through just different things. The fact that I had a core group of brewers, it just seemed like a foundation was laid months before. Without I, even realizing it. I had no clue. <laughs> um, we decided to to take the leap of faith, knowing that that God was with us on that journey. Yeah. And how, how was the journey? It must have been a cool experience. It was incredible. I show up to Arizona, you know, end of February, and... Um, we're so excited. You know, we get to our apartment and we had ordered stuff, you know, we had to do it quick. So we get to our apartment, we order stuff off Amazon, like true 2019ers do. And like, <laughs> we'll, we'll ship it ahead and we get to the apartment complex and, um, three fourths of our stuff is stolen. So we don't have anything. Oh, um, man. you know, and you're like, Oh, is this a sign? Like what, like what's going on? Yeah. Um, and I still at that point hadn't even signed a contract. Wow. So you're moving, but nothing's even officially no. done yet. No, they said, we got to get you here. You have to go through a physical as a coach. You have to pass the physical, go through the labs, everything like that. Then we'll give you a contract. So I did all this saying, please, God. Like, yeah. Um, but once I got there, I, everything worked out. I hit the ground running, and I'm surrounded immediately by a family. Like, people talk about, you know, sports family, the Milwaukee Brewers have a family. And I had people I've never met. Uh, Maybe I talked to him on the phone, they rallied around me, they hit the ground running with me alongside me. Um, Nothing but encouragement, Um, nothing but like having my family's back and my back. Um, Because right along this same time frame, we were getting my older son evaluated for autism. Hmm. So with that, process they were amazing and then to go through the whole season i'm learning so much about the new side of the game data analytics what it looks like to help help pitchers from that angle but also using what i learned in the game myself with my eyes and feel and it was so refreshing to to go through spring training extended spring training which lasts until june 1st i'm home every day by 3 p.m because everything's in the morning yeah I have family time every Sunday's off. I'm able to take my family to church during the baseball season. And then we go to Colorado Springs for the summer. um, And uh, we find a great occupational therapist for my older son. My younger son is having a blast coming to the games. And it was the first time in a really long time in baseball that we felt like a family. Mm -hmm. And I knew that my employer also had my back in that. It's a really cool feeling. That's awesome. And you get to do it again in 2020, right? What's uh, the status of this year? Uh, where you'll be in terms of, because I say you're with the Milwaukee Brewers, but there's like levels of minor leagues and, and places that you can be working through. So what's 2020 look like? Yeah, so 2020 uh, has me in Arizona all year long. Okay. Um, not a bad place. Not a bad place to be. Uh, I have an incredible opportunity to be at the complex, a beautiful complex that they have there. Um, and I get to help rookie ball guys that are coming out of the draft or getting signed. I have a I have a spectrum, so to speak, of of players that come from Latin American countries that are really young. They've never been to America before. Yeah. Uh, I have draft guys. I have rehab guys. I have just so many different people that I'm going to be around uh, during this entire summer. And, and, and it's great for the family, too. We're in one place. We don't have to move. There's no road trips. Every fifth day is off. And my son with autism is able to have consistency. He knows that dad's going to be home every night during what is a really, really critical time for him too. So we'll get back to our conversation with Michael Schlack in just a moment. I want to tell you about how you can become a member of the Sports Spectrum family and partner with us here at Sports Spectrum by subscribing to our Sports Spectrum magazine, not your typical sports magazine. Of course, you'll have the great stories and the photos and the interviews of some of the top athletes in the country like other sports publications but in our magazine you'll read about how faith plays a role in these athletes lives they are defined by god not by their sport in the magazine sports spectrums magazine is published four times a year occasional special issues maybe two or three during the year but you'll get definitely four issues a quarterly magazine 
for just $18 for an entire year subscription. Super cheap, $18. And it's where sports and faith connect. Perfect for the sports fan who loves Jesus. Perfect for the sports fan who's curious about Jesus. And perfect for the sports fan who has yet to discover Jesus. In each issue, you can expect intriguing stories of athletes living out their faith, devotionals from the athletes themselves, and a gospel message detailing how readers can accept Christ and ask the Lord into their heart and begin a relationship with Jesus. The content is suitable for all ages, and we highly recommend that you subscribe to this magazine if you're a man or a woman who loves Jesus and loves sports. $18 for an entire year subscription. Here's how you can subscribe. Simply go to the website, sportspectrum.com. Click on the magazine icon at the top and you're in sportspectrum.com and click that magazine icon. You can subscribe right there or give us a call toll free 866-821-2971, 866-821-2971 and subscribe to Sports Spectrum's magazine today. Let's get back to our conversation with Michael Schlack joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Your dream was to pitch in the major leagues, I presume, because you went through and you get drafted in 2004 in the third round of the Major League Baseball draft. So you're a prospect that they're they're watching. They have their eyes on. You were drafted by the Texas Rangers out of high school, and you went to high school in Marietta, Georgia, Wheeler High School coming out as a big prospect and it doesn't work out in the essence of the way that you would hope a third round prospect would pan out injuries opportunities what was that time like for you as a as a baseball player and honestly as a man of faith too i i wasn't i was considered a man of faith at through that but i i wasn't I had spiritual jet lag, like we learned at the the last conference. You know what I mean? Yes, like, sure. It's like you're you're sitting here saying, "I'm going to get to the big leagues. I hope I get to the whatever it is." Like, but you're doing it all yourself, and that's what I was doing. So I had all the weight of that. The fact that you know, I mean, it's well known. Minor leaguers don't make much money, so you're trying to balance that with you know a marriage and and I, it was really hard because I, my identity was baseball. Sure. It was all I've ever been good at, you know. Um, obviously, I, I'm I'm okay at other things, but baseball was who I was. Like growing up, my friends, my family, they were, you know, they they knew me as the kid that threw hard, you know, and the kid that was a good pitcher. And then I got drafted, and I went through this whole thing, and it was like, this is what I do, and it's who I am. And uh, my first shoulder injury happened on one pitch. I threw a slider. I'll never forget it. Little Rock, Arkansas. It's like mm. the third inning. I'm throwing a pitch. I throw it. Mark Trumbo's hitting. Yeah, sure. Like I'm, I throw a slider, and it feels like two knives go in my shoulder, and, and I could not throw another pitch, right? So everything that I had built up, everything, that, whatever the pedestal was that I was standing on, got kicked out from under me very, very hard. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm sent on this little spiral of like, tests and x-ray and oh what is it let's try to rehab them this whole process that takes months and then finally um surgery and i can't play uh for up for a year um and through that process i realized that my christianity was fake Hmm. essentially like i was just doing it because i felt like i had to um, or because, or maybe I thought like it, 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 I thought I was doing it right. And until adversity hit, I didn't know that I really needed God. Um, just because I, everything was working out okay so far. Well, baseball in many ways sounds like was your God. It was, yeah. it was a hundred because it consumed me. It was what I had to worry about. Like I worried about that more than I worried about my wife. I worried about that more than I worried about my family, like any, like, and when I look back now, not only was that and the second shoulder surgery when I was making a, a try to come back again, I went through the whole process again. Not only was that God showing me, number one, that he's in control, but number two, that maybe that wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And my priorities were really, really, really far off whack hmm. and offline that I figured out what was truly important. So it took that. It took literally everything that I had wrapped my identity in since I was eight years old to be removed, taken away for me to find out that everything I had been doing my entire life 
was leading up to what was about to be a career change. And I thought the whole time it was because I was, I was going to be a major leaguer. And it doesn't happen. And you reach it as high as double A. Mm-hmm. And I saw when I was looking through your stats, reminding myself, because you and I have known each other, but just kind of going through them again, you reach double A at 21, but then you're there at 22 and you're 23 and 24. And in 25, you're, I think, in independent league yep. ball. And then you're dumb pitching by 27. Mm-hmm. So baseball is done at 27, the dream, everything you've lived up to. But at that point, are you content? Are you able to find joy? Are you able to kind of say, okay, God, I don't like it, but I trust you? Or are you still struggling with this whole, God, what the heck are you doing here? I'm still struggling at that point. Yeah. You can ask my wife. Like, I sat on our bed in tears, like, what am I doing? Hmm. What, are, like, me? How did this happen to me? Like, this doesn't happen to me. Like, I was supposed to be in the big, like, whatever. My friends are on TV. Like, what's going on? And, um, she was the encourager. She always is. And said, you need to get, you gave them your word. You would go play independent ball. You need to go out there and play. And what ended up happening was I had the most fun I've ever had. I, I learned that baseball's fun again, but ultimately what I did was I started forming relationships without knowing it. That would help me become a coach. I, there were guys on that team that were already at the end of their career that were already thinking about coaching, and I wasn't even there yet. And uh, independent ball, what it did for me was it rekindled the joy so that I didn't leave it completely. And it put me in contact and in, in groups with people that not only taught me how to be a coach, but also showed me that maybe I should coach. I had no clue I wanted to coach. And I had a, I had a manager when I was in Amarillo, Texas. I didn't even want to go to that team. It was literally the last resort. I was making $700 a month when they paid me. And, um, is that even minimum wage? (laughs) Yeah, no. And, and he's the one that told me when he was going to release me from there, by the way, that have you ever tried coaching? Maybe you should stay with me instead of going home. Ask your wife if you can stay, I'll give you my meal money. I can't pay you, but I'll give you my meal money. You can be my bullpen coach because I think you might have something to give in this game. And I said, okay, it was, it was one of the, it was that next sort of step where hmm. I could have just gone home, but I, we prayed about it and I felt this tug of maybe I should try coaching Interesting. And because I, this guy, Bobby Brown, I respect him greatly. I just didn't know that's what I was meant to do it it didn't feel right but I said I would give it a try and I came home after that first day I went from the locker room to the coach's room in one evening and I came home that night and my wife said she instantly saw a changed man she saw joy that she hadn't seen in years she saw happy she's like "I, I could see written on your face that you were doing what God meant for you to do and you didn't even know it amazing I love that story too because all of what God was putting through, putting you through the adversity and all the, the injuries and just the identity issues and the crisis of faith all led you to, to know that, you know what, God's plan is bigger than mine. And this is where he has me. And now he has you coaching in the big league. So as we wind down, what's the great lesson from the Lord that you're, you're learning right now? Because you're about to be, well, you are 35 and heading into 2020 now still a young man, but your coaching is, is where God's rooted you in terms of your, your sweet spot. But what's he learned? What's the lesson he's teaching you? What are you learning from him through this sort of process of learning to be a coach? That's a good question. I I'm learning priorities. Number one, I'm learning that it is possible to be successful by baseball standards, but also have a family, um, that you can take your kids with you for the season that you can take your wife with you for the season that you can still have time with them. Um, and also still be good at your job. Uh, but more than that, I think the big picture, the big lesson that God has been teaching me and it's been a years long process is that I'm not in control. Yeah. I'm not, I have no say in this story. And sometimes it's the least likely person the least likely town, the least likely locker room that will, that God will use to nudge you into your purpose. Hmm. Because I was, I was where I didn't want to be doing what I didn't really want to do. And from the least likely source, God reached down, turned me a different direction 
and said, that's where you're supposed to be going. So we try to control everything. And we end up places we maybe weren't meant to be or where we don't think we need to be. But God is using all of that. And so a big lesson is don't always try to remove yourself from situations that you don't like, so to speak. Maybe it's your heart that needs to change. Maybe you just need to wait a little bit longer. Maybe you need to have faith in that situation because around the next bend, God could use the most unlikely source to point you in the direction you're supposed to be going. I call that blooming where you're planted. I love that. That's what it is. That's what it is. Michael Schlack, I really appreciate you, man. Um, Wish you nothing but the best for 2020 with the Milwaukee Brewers and in Arizona. And uh, thanks for being here. Really appreciate you. Thank you so much. And that was Michael Schlack joining us here on Sports Spectrum. He's doing uh, player development and he's a pitching coach in the minor leagues for the Milwaukee Brewers. You can give him a follow on Twitter. Just search Michael Schlack, S-C-H-L-A-C-T. Give him a follow. Let him know that you heard his story here on Sports Spectrum. He's really a good follow on Twitter. He he shares a lot of encouraging notes. He shares a lot of leadership um, kind of nuggets. And I'll give you an example of one recently. He tweeted out, he said, you will not build trust with those you lead by always being tough, harsh, or critical. If you want to truly build trust, be vulnerable, share truth in love, hold them accountable, and make sure they know you care about them as people first and foremost. And that's the kind of stuff you're going to get from following Michael. Solid dude, one of the best guys you'll ever meet, and so glad that he shared his story with us here today on Sports Spectrum. We really appreciate you as well for listening. This podcast has been such a journey now, almost three years, more than three years actually, on the podcast since 2017, over 500 episodes, over a million and a half downloads, and just a lot of great content and opportunities for you to hear the stories of people like Michael Schlack telling their journeys of sports and faith in Jesus Christ. And we're just grateful. We really are for all that you do, for all that you have done in terms of supporting Sports Spectrum, whether it's simply hitting the play button and listening to this episode or telling someone about Sports Spectrum and the ministry. We're finding people still have no idea that we exist. And really, there aren't many other outlets out there like this that use a media sort of ministry to tell the stories of sports and connect it with faith in Jesus Christ. So As always, you can get a hold of us on our website, sportspectrum.com. Read the articles there, get the daily devotionals, listen to the podcast. It can all be found right there at sportspectrum.com. You can also email me, jason at sportspectrum.com, with any guest ideas, any thoughts you might have on this episode or any other episode, any guest ideas that you want to see on future episodes, email me, jason at sportspectrum.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.